Happy Shocktober, everyone! Parent Orange here with a super spooky story time episode. Today, I'll be telling the story for once. <sighs> I figured it was time to give him a shot. And I'm not throwing away my shot. <laughs> Today's story is the legend of Sleepy Hollow with mood lighting. <laughs> Orange has promised to tell the story exactly the way it was meant to be told. Isn't that right, Orange? You bet. I totally didn't not not disagree to never do that. Wait. Let's begin! <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a horseless headman who... Uh, wait, 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 sorry. I, I gotta stop you real quick. It's a headless horseman, Orange. He had a pumpkin for a head. Huh? Like jack-o'-lantern. That's what the headless horseman had instead of a head. Oh, gotcha. Once upon a time, there was a horseman who had a pumpkin for a head and... Orange, stop! Give me that! Hey! I thought I got to tell this story! Well, I thought so too, but... Well, this is important to get right. The whole story depends on it. There are three things involved here. A pumpkin... Check. A horse... Got it! And a man! You lost me. <sighs> a man, Orange! Whoa! A man, Orange? So his head isn't orange? No! His head is a pumpkin! Oh! So he's a pumpkin man! He is a man! Got it! So he has the head of a man! That's not what I said! I'm saying he doesn't have any head at all! Well, so then it's, what? The horse who is the one with the head of a pumpkin? No! Oh! I get it now! The horse is the one with the orange for the head, and the man has the head of a horse! Wow! That's it! We're starting over! Jeez, easy! Don't have a cow, man! <laughs> Would you stop combining animals? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good idea! <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a pumpkin-headed horse cow! Orange, you are ruining the story! We are almost out of time, and we haven't even gotten to the actual story yet! No Ichabod Crane, no Sleepy Hollow, no... Hair, relax! I'll get to all that stuff, I promise. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sure you will. This is your episode, and I keep forgetting that. I trust you. Thanks, Pear. That means a lot. Now then. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a headless horseman with the Ichabody of a crane. Wait. And he was super sleepy, because his horse head was hollow. Orange. Hold on. His horse was actually an orange, and his pumpkin was actually a carriage from his fairy godmother. You're combining stories now! And the horseman left his glass hoof on the steps of the palace one night. Ah! And the prince had to find the person that fit, but it was super hard because the kingdom was filled with different kinds of combined animals. What the? And they were all kept on a remote island because they had dinosaur DNA, and also because it was a musical set in high school. <laughs> and that's why I never let you tell the stories, dude. You, what you talking about? If you're saying the story was bad, well, I think that's bull, man! Stop combining animals! <laughs> Welcome to story time. Today, Orange and I will... Hey, Pear! Smell my flower! <laughs> no. Uh, why not? Because it's a prank flower lapel. You're going to squirt me with water. Nuh-uh. It's real. Then why is there a tube running over to that glass of water? Because flowers need to be in water to grow. Duh. Go on. Smell it. It smells as good as it looks. Uh, Orange, I think today's story is an important one for you to hear. It's called The Boy Who Cried Wolf. And the moral of the story is one I hope you listen to. Well, keep hoping, because I don't have any ears. <laughs> okay, let's give it a shot anyway, shall we? Once upon a time, there was a boy whose job was to watch his town's sheep. As far as jobs go, it wasn't half bad. <laughs> now, the boy did get bored from time to time. Well, sure. Counting sheep would put anybody to sleep. And to fight his boredom, the boy would play pranks on the other people in the town sometime. Pranks? Oh, this story just got good. What'd he do? Whoopee cushion? Saran wrap across the doorway? <laughs> Bug in the ice cube? Horse head under the bed covers? No. He didn't do any of those things, especially not a horse head under the covers. Where'd you even hear about that? Okay, you know what? Never mind. We're getting this story back on track. Can we get it back on the horse track? <laughs> Stop it! Now then, the prank the boy would always pull was this. He'd run into town and cry out, A horse is eating the sheep! No, it was a wolf. Oh, right. Sorry. He'd run into town and yell, A wolf is eating all the horses! No! There are no horses in this story, dude! Easy, Pear! No need to be such a naysayer! <laughs> uh, 
the boy would run into town and yell that a wolf was eating all the sheep. Which, of course, wasn't true at all. The sheep were all fine. The boy was just pranking the townspeople out of boredom. You could say he really pulled the wool over their eyes. <laughs> That's right. And day after day, the boy kept running into town, crying wolf. What's the wolf crying about? I thought he got to eat all the sheep he wanted. No, the wolf is not crying, dude. The boy is crying wolf. Oh, yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> and also, there is no wolf. The boy was pranking the townspeople, remember? Oh, yeah. So what prank did he do? Rubber chicken? Googly eyes? The ram ramp over the toilet? Mm -hmm. None of the above! I just told you the prank he pulled, dude! He lied about a wolf eating the sheep! Oh yeah, I remember now. Boy, he really fleeced those town folk, didn't he? <laughs> oh, can we please just get this over with? The townsfolk began to catch on over time, and after a while, they stopped falling for the boy's pranks. But then, one day the boy was out in the fields with the sheep, and guess what showed up? A horse! No! SpongeBob? No! Two horses? A wolf! A wolf showed up, dude! Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. So the boy ran into town and cried wolf again. But this time, the townsfolk didn't believe him. They thought he was just pranking them. Oh, no! But, but what happened to the sheep? They were eaten! <laughs> by the horse? The horses don't even eat sheep! This story makes no sense! They were eaten by the wolf! Oh! And what happened to the horse? There is no horse! Yeah, I definitely didn't understand this story. Uh, so let me guess, you didn't catch the moral of the story either. The one about not lying or pranking people too much? Nope. So I assume you're gonna keep pranking everyone in the kitchen. Of course not, Pear. I swear, I swear it on this flower lapel. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, fruit lovers. Ho, ho, hope you're ready for a downright fantastic episode of story. <laughs> not, not so fast, Orange. We'll be reading A Christmas Carol, but Santa isn't in it. Yo, what you talking about? A Christmas story without any Santa? That's like an animal story without any up dog. What's up dog? Not much. What's up with you, dog? <laughs> ah. Well, I may not know what today's story is about, but I do know this. It needs more Santa and explosions and up dog. It most certainly does not need those things. Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol is a classic. Now sit back and listen up. All right, I'll listen up, dog. <laughs> Orange. What? What did I say to get your blood pressure up, dog? <laughs> ah. <clears throat> Once there was an old miser named Ebenezer Scrooge. He was super greedy and had no Christmas spirit. But not for long. Little did Ebenezer know he was about to be visited by three Christmas spirits. <laughs> That's right. That night, Ebenezer was visited by three ghosts. Casper, Beetlejuice, and the Snapchat ghost. No. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. They were the ghost of Christmas presents. Present. The ghost of Christmas blast. Past. And the ghost of Christmas up dog. <laughs> oh, good grief. The story just got terrible. Nah, -uh. the story's way better with up dog. Wanna know why? Why? Because up dog knows what's up dog. <laughs> uh. And also, Up Dog break dances and serves, and sometimes both at the same time. Serves up! Orange, do not say it! Dog! <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you the story was way better this way. It is not better this way. It makes no sense. Uh, duh, that's why it's better. Oh, also, Batman visited Ebenezer that night. What? But let's get to that later, shall we? Let's not. Can we please get back to the real story now? Sure thing. The real story is how so many ghosts were appearing in Ebenezer's bedroom. Big ghosts, little ghosts, Snapchat ghosts. I said no Snapchat ghosts. <laughs> Easy there, Pear. No need to be so spirited. <laughs> Any hoosies. Soon Ebenezer's room was filled with g -g 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 ghosts. So he called in ghost hunters. No. And they were looking around. Everything was in night vision. And they couldn't find anything until... Until what? I thought you didn't like this story. I don't. Admit it. You want to know what they found? Nope. Pear? Fine. What did they find? Well, what they found was... Upman! Huh? What's up, man? Not much. What's up with you, man? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. They found Batman. And he had way better night vision goggles. So he made sharp work of everyone, especially Carol. Carol? Who the heck is Carol? One of the ghost hunters. That's 
That's why it's called a Christmas Carol. Duh. <laughs> okay, I think we're about done with this story. Well, not quite. Don't you wanna know what the Ghost of Christmas presents brought everybody? Not if it blows up the Ghost of Christmas. It brought boxes full of fire, and it blew up the Ghost of Christmas blast. <laughs> and we're done here. <laughs> they got blown up, dog. <laughs> uh... Welcome back to Storytime with Pear. Today, I have a special co-host, and it's not Orange. That's me! Yay! That's right, it's Marshmallow. I'm so excited to be here. I love telling stories, and I love hearing stories, and I love learning about new stories. Well, that's so refreshing to hear. Whenever Orange co-hosts Storytime, all he does is change the stories to add TNT to them. <laughs> Well, that's great to hear, because today's story is Humpty Dumpty, a classic nursery rhyme that definitely does not need to be altered in any way. Humpty Dumpty's an egg? I love eggs! Yay! Well, then Humpty Dumpty's the nursery rhyme for you! How does it go? How does it go? I'll tell you right now. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men. Um, that's not exactly how it ends. Yeah, I knew I probably got it wrong. There were no puppies or rainbows. Plus, the horses probably should have been unicorns. Um. Let me give it another try. Humpty Dumpty sat on a cloud. Humpty Dumpty had one million friends. All the king's unicorns and all the king's puppies slipped on a rainbow and dragged Mother down. Yay! What? What'd you think, Pam? Did I nail it? Well, for one thing, I. Rhyming could use some work. Great feedback! I appreciate the note, and I look forward to using it to improve myself in the future. Yay! Cool, but the thing is, Marshy, this is a very old nursery rhyme. Uh-huh. One that's been told for hundreds of years. Such a long time! Cool! So, it's already been written. It doesn't need to be changed in any way. I comprehend completely, 100%. <laughs> Good. So are you ready to listen to how the nursery rhyme goes? I can't wait! I'm so excited! <laughs> All right then. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty was a bouncy ball! <laughs> All the king's horses and all the king's men watched Humpty Bounce again and again! Yay! Number five! What a happy ending! Thoughts, Pear? Yeah. I've got a few notes. Ooh, can't wait! <laughs> First off, your rhyming really improved. Thank you! So, great job with that note. Yay! I worked really hard at it! Second note, you kind of changed the outcome of the story again. I did? Oh no! I'm so sorry! Yeah, see, Humpty Dumpty is an egg, not a bouncy ball. He's supposed to crack when he falls off the wall. Oh, I see! Well, a tiny little crack, surely! No! Humpty shatters into a bunch of pieces! And don't call me Shirley! <laughs> So are you ready to hear how Humpty Dumpty actually goes? Sure am! I love a happy ending! Are you prepared for the ending to maybe not be happy? My little marshmallow brain can't even begin to comprehend what an unhappy ending might be! <laughs> ah, okay, well, here goes nothing. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. But they tried extra hard and it worked as a team. No. And after a while, it worked out like a dream. Uh. Humpty was fixed and was new and improved, so everyone cheered and started to grow. Do the Humpty dance, the Humpty Dumpty dance. Are you kidding me? Do the Humpty dance, the Humpty Dumpty dance. This is not how Humpty Dumpty ends. The king's puppies and unicorns do not all do the Humpty dance. This is a very famous nursery rhyme, people! We must respect the oral tradition! What's your name, man? We can't hear you over all the Humpty Dumpty fun we're having! <laughs> ah! <laughs> hey, everyone! Earlier today, Orange tried to touch his tongue to his butt and sprained his tongue. And his butt! So, today's Storytime episode will be hosted by me and... Marshmallow! Yay! Marshy, it's great to have you back! And it's great to be back! 
Well, that's a breath of fresh air, because today's story is an all-time classic that needs no alterations made to it. Aladdin. Hooray! Ah, you're a fan. You've seen the movie, I take it? No, I just know I like the story a lot, because I like everything. Yeah. <laughs> Can't argue with that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a man living on the streets. With his monkey! Fine, he can have a monkey like in the movie. I want a puppy too! You can't have a puppy. But I want a puppy! Marshmallow, there's no puppy. Would you let me get on with the story? Okay, okay, no need to bark at me. <laughs> har har. So anyway, one day Aladdin... And his monkey! And his monkey get approached by this creepy dude. And creepy dude's like, go into this treasure-riddled cave for me you can keep anything you want. Even a puppy? Anything except a puppy. Huh? Anyway, the creepy guy says, keep anything you want. Just bring me this old lamp. And Aladdin's like, great. So Aladdin goes into the cave. <laughs> with his monkey. Thank you. And he gets the lamp. But he never gets a chance to give it to the creepy dude because before he can, Aladdin rubs the lamp and out pops a... Puppy! No! What he wished for. Then the genie asked for a second wish, and Aladdin wished for. Let me guess, more puppies. <laughs> of course not, silly. He already had all the puppies in the world, so he wished for more worlds. And those worlds came with more puppies. Yay! Okay, so you're telling me Aladdin wished additional Earths into existence? Wouldn't you? Puppies are so cuddly. I most certainly would not. And the best part was that. Okay, that's actually pretty smart. And so all the worlds got along in perfect harmony, and everyone was happy, and that's the end! Uh, that's nice and all, but your story didn't really have any, I don't know, conflict? I know! Wasn't it great? Yay! No conflict! The perfect story! Yeah, but don't you kind of want stuff to happen in your stories? I don't understand! Yay! <laughs> like this, everything was perfect. Until the Aladdins all met one another. The sky got all dark. They started fighting over who was the real Aladdin. And finally, they decided there could be only one. Oh, my! A massive battle ensued. And when the dust settled, there was only one Aladdin left. And he controlled all of the lamps. But then he used his third wish. Oh? Yeah, Aladdin used his third wish to make the sky bright and to bring all the Aladdins back to life and be friends again. So what was left? Just one Earth filled with Aladdins and puppies? And monkeys! Ah, yeah. Who could forget the monkeys? The Hooray! We did it! We told the perfect story! Well, I'm not so sure about that, but we sure told something. See y'all next story time! Goodbye! Welcome back to another episode of Story Time with me, Pear, and me, Pear's best friend! Ugh, whatever, dude. He doesn't deny it. This is progress, people. <laughs> Today's story is the classic tale of Cinderella. Mm, this is the one where she pricks her finger on a spinning wheel, right? No. The one where she eats the poison apple? No. Where she has super long hair? Not even close. Huh. Well, I guess I'll be doing more listening than usual this episode. <laughs> Finally. <clears throat> Cinderella was a poor young lady who lived with her evil stepmother and evil stepsisters. Oh, it's coming back to me. The stepsisters were snakes, right? No. Dude, I don't know what story you're thinking of, but it's not this one. No, snakes? Really? Nah, I'm sorry. Ah. <laughs> Anyway, while her evil stepmother and evil stepsisters did whatever they pleased, Cinderella spent all day doing manual labor. Hard manual labor. Jackhammering, ice rope trucking, strip mining. No! Cinderella even did shifts as a wrecking ball. Stop! Nah, you didn't let me finish. I know very well what you were about to do, Orange. Nah. -uh. Yaha, uh -huh. you were about to sing the Miley song. <laughs> Besides, Cinderella wasn't doing jobs like those. She was working around the house, scrubbing floors and washing dishes, because she was never allowed to leave. Oh, got 
Gotcha. One evening, her evil stepmother and evil stepsisters left for a ball. Ooh, a ball, you say? Not a wrecking ball. <laughs> it was a royal ball with dancing and music and fancy dresses. But Cinderella had no fancy dress, so she couldn't go. Well, that's so sad. I don't like this story. Well, then you're in luck because it's about to get way happier. You mean? Yes, Cinderella gets to go to the ball after all. Her fairy godmother makes her wish come true, transforms all the junk in Cinderella's life into fancy, awesome princess stuff. Oh. What, is that not what you had in mind? I mean, my idea had more Miley Cyrus in it, but yours seems pretty happy too, I guess. Go on. Yeah, I will, thanks. So Cinderella had all these awesome things. A beautiful dress, a pumpkin carriage, glass slippers. Glass slippers? That sounds dangerous and inconvenient. Well, they weren't. They were awesome. The one catch was this. Cinderella had to be back before midnight, because that's when the magic spell ended. Also, midnight's when the werewolves come out. <laughs> so there are no werewolves in this story, Orange. No wrecking balls, no ice road truckers, and no werewolves. This is a classic fairy tale, and you are not going to ruin it. Okay, fine. We'll tell it how old you like it told. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so Cinderella arrived at the royal ball and entered. Like a wrecking ball! <laughs> 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 Prince Charming went over to Cinderella and they started dancing and they kept dancing. All the other ladies at the party were getting super jealous, especially her evil stepmother and stepsisters. Yes, I suppose they would be jealous. They are people, not snakes. Okay, okay, whatever you say. <laughs> anyway, Cinderella and Prince Charming danced the night away and she lost track of time. Suddenly, the clock struck 12, and she had to book it! Because of the werewolves! No! Because her fancy stuff started to change back to normal. And as she raced down the front steps of the castle, she lost her glass slipper! Which, of course, disappeared because all of her other fancy magic stuff was disappearing too. Um, actually, no. The slipper didn't disappear. It stayed there, permanently. Huh? Why? Wow. Good point. I, I actually don't know. It's just that if the fairy godmother can make permanent stuff, why not let Cinderella keep everything? Yeah, that's a plot hole. There's no good reason it stayed. This fairy godmother seems mean. Are you sure she wasn't her fairy stepmother in disguise? <laughs> Dude, I can't explain the slipper, okay? I don't know. Then I get to finish the story. Bring in the werewolf wrecking ball. <laughs> Orange! <laughs> I give up. Hey, everybody. I'm Pear, here with another episode of Storytime. And I'm Orange, here to ruin another episode of Storytime. <laughs> uh, so glad you decided to join us, Orange. Really? Because your voice doesn't sound very glad. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, today we're reading Rapunzel. Do you know anything about this story, Orange? Sure don't. Fantastic. So how about we play a game of Mad Libs? I'll let you fill in the blanks in the story as we go. Sound good? Ooh, I like it. Now just to warn you, this story gets pretty nuts. So you're gonna have to get pretty wacky if you wanna ruin it. Oh no, how will I ever be wacky? <laughs> All right, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a husband and his wife who was pregnant with a baby girl. Now the wife, she loved... Okay, Orange, go ahead and fill in the blank. She loved... Radishes! <laughs> That's right! She loved radishes! Huh? That's actually how the story goes. Thank you very much for helping. Oh, um, I, I mean, I, I knew that. Yeah, you're welcome. Now, as I was saying, the wife loved radishes so much that she told her husband to get her some radishes from a garden next door, which was owned by a... Which was owned by a witch! <laughs> That's correct! It is? But I was just making a witch-witch joke. Well, it's exactly what the book says. See? <laughs> Now, the husband got caught stealing radishes, and the witch punished them by... Yelling at them! No, wait, that's too obvious. Call the police! Wait, no. Ooh, the witch kidnapped their baby! 
me just because they took a couple radishes. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Actually, that's correct. What is happening? I told you, dude. This story is ridiculous. So the witch went off into the woods and raised baby Rapunzel and locked her in a high tower when she became a teenager. Now the tower the witch locked Rapunzel in had no ladder. So the witch got up into the tower by... Well, obviously a witch could just ride her broom up there. So I'm going to guess that she had never ever cut Rapunzel's hair. So it grew long enough to make a hair ladder down to the ground. <laughs> that is correct. Wow, looks like I might not be able to derail this story after all. It's as crazy as my imagination is. Ha, well, I'm glad you finally met your match. Now, one day a prince was riding by and heard Rapunzel. Chopping radishes. No, actually she was singing. About radishes? Probably not. Anyway, so the prince called out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your... Radishes! No, let down your hair. Oh, that makes sense. <gasps> Wait, oh my gosh, Pear, the story's starting to make sense. My time to shine. We gotta make some nonsense out of this story. <laughs> oh, no. So the prince climbed up the ladder made of radishes, and he and Rapunzel both ate radishes until the witch came back from guarding her radishes, and the prince turned the witch into a radish using his magic radish. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for story time, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully next time we'll... I'm not finished! The prince and Rapunzel got married and had four baby radishes, which they named Radish, 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 and Ugmo. Enough! <laughs> Just kidding. Ugmo's name was Radish, too, and they lived happily radish after in a radish castle, and also the entire world is made of radishes. <laughs> the end! Wait, wait! Can I please have one last word? What is it? <laughs> oh, would you stop saying radish? <laughs> radish! Hello and good morrow, fruit lovers. Welcome to Storytime. I am your co-host, Grapefruit. And I'm your co-co-host, Marshmallow. <laughs> People often come up to me and say, Grapefruit, you're super awesome and super tough. What do you like to read? And I always tell them the same thing. I like to read the scariest, awesomest stories out there. Old Brother's Grim Fairy Tales, like today's story, Little Red Riding Hood. I that's why you're excited for this story? Because you love the color red? <sighs> okay, you call my bluff. I actually love all the colors the same. Mashi, are you sure you're ready for this story? Because this ain't your mama's fairy tale. Of course not. My mom already has a fairy tale. All unicorns do. <laughs> Some people find today's story a bit scary. Not me, of course. I'm not scared of anything. But I've heard other people find it scary. I love scary stories. You sure about that? <sighs> okay, you called my bluff again. I tried to warn you. Let's do this! Little Red Riding Hood! <laughs> Once upon a time, Little Red Riding Hood set off to take a basket of food to her sick grandmother. She walked down a path that led through a very dark, very spooky forest. And there were flowers and bumblebees everywhere! And also, it was sunny and not scary at all! Marshmallow, I have the book right here! It explicitly says the woods were spooky and dark! Uh, there can't be any bumblebees! Fine, but they're killer bees! Let's continue. As Little Red Riding Hood walked through the creepy woods. She met a bumblebee and befriended it. Fine, fine, she made a friend. But then she came upon a massive scary wolf. And the wolf was really cute and fluffy and had blue eyes and pink bones on his tail. <laughs> no, the wolf had fire in his eyes and blood on his teeth. This is a scary wolf and he's the bad guy in the story. I don't understand. <laughs> So the huge scary wolf talked to Little Red Riding Hood and learned that she was headed to her grandma's house. The wolf thought to himself, if I play my cards right, this could be a better day for me. I could eat grandma, Little Red Riding Hood, and those sweet treats in the basket. Ooh, what sweet treats were in the basket? That's not important. I'm imagining cupcakes and bonbons and lollipops and... Marshy, let's not focus on the treats, okay? But how can I focus when there might be lollipops in that basket? I Okay, there were pies in the basket. Yay! How many pies? Too many pies. Yay! Anyway, then the wolf ran ahead, ate Grandma whole, and dressed up in one of her nightgowns. <laughs> the wolf put on a Grandma's nightgown? That's funny. This story isn't scary at all. Yes, it is. We're getting to the scary part. <gasps> oh, no! Oh, yes. Now then, a bit while later, Little Red Riding Hood came into Grandma's house, and right away she could tell something was different about her grandma. What a smart girl! So Little Red Riding Hood said, Grandma, what big ears you have? Aw, she's complimenting the wolf's appearance. That's so sweet. 
It's not sweet, Marshmallow. The wolf is tricking her. Oh, I love magic tricks. Not that kind of trick. Anyway, then Little Red Riding Hood said, Grandma, what big eyes you have. Huh? That's so romantic. Are they in love? They are not in love. <sighs> Finally, Little Red Riding Hood said, Grandma, what big teeth you have. And the wolf replied, Oh, the better to eat your sweet treats with. No. And then they both chowed down on bonbons and pies together because sharing is caring. And also Grandma was alive this whole time. And also the wolf was actually a puppy and the scary woods was actually in Disneyland. Yay! Uh, Marshy, you really wrecked the mood there at the end. Oh, and remember the bumblebee from earlier? He swung by and brought money because friendship is forever. And stories always end happily. And there are pies for everyone. And the moral of the story is to always have enough pies for you and your friends. Yay! Was I right, Grapefruit? Is that how the story ends? <sighs> yes, Marshmallow. That is how the dark, sinister brother's grim version of Little Red Riding Hood ends. I knew it! Yay! The end! Ugh. <sighs> Welcome to story time, fruit lovers. I'm Orange, and this is... Huh? I expected you to say your name, but that has a nice ring to it, too. <laughs> I'm getting the silent treatment, apparently. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Hey, Orange. Remember yesterday when I yelled at you for playing your kazoo nonstop for 12 hours? Uh, well, yeah, it was the annual kazoo marathon. What did you expect? How else am I supposed to raise money to buy more kazoos? <laughs> well, I yelled too much and now my voice is gone. Looks like you'll have to do today's story, Puss in Boots, all by yourself. All by myself? Woohoo! But before you get too excited, know that I'm gonna be right here next to you making sure you stay true to the story as written. Ah, oh, man. Whenever you get off track, I'll ring my bell. That means you need to go back to telling the actual story. Got it? Yes, I got it. All right, let's ring a ling and do this thing. Here's the famous story, Puss in Boots, which is, of course, about a boots-wearing platypus. <laughs> okay, okay, he's a cat. You're no fun at all. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a young man. He was the youngest of three sons. They were named Mary, Curly, and Mo. They were named Huey, Dewey, and Louie. All right, their names don't matter, but I choose to give them the nicknames Biff, Beef, and McGillicuddy. <laughs> now, each brother was given something when their father passed away. Biff got Dad's 86 Corvette. His electric guitar. All right, the family mill. Beef got the family spaceship. Jar of teeth. All right, mules. And that left McGillicuddy with just a dumb old cat. Except the cat wasn't dumb at all. He was actually super clever. Also, he could talk because one day he told McGillicuddy he needed a pair of Air Jordans. Clown shoes. High heels. Okay, boots. And as soon as McGillicuddy got him the boots, that cat got to work on turning McGillicuddy's life around. The first step he took in his new boots was to go meet the king. <laughs> Get it? Step? Cause he's got boots? Oh, right, you can't talk. <laughs> well, Puss started bringing gifts to the king all the time. Gifts like annoying orange merchandise, a Nintendo Switch, TNT. Okay, so maybe I don't know what kinds of gifts they gave him, but Puss and the King got real chummy. Then one day, Puss was out in the woods with McGillicuddy, and he heard the King's carriage approaching. Puss sprung into action and told McGillicuddy to get naked. Oh, that's really what he did? Wow. Huh. Well, I thought it would just be a funny thing to say, but sure enough, he asked him to get naked. Man, this is one pervy story you gave me to read, Pear. <laughs> anyway, when the king's carriage came by, Puss ran out and told the king that robbers had taken McGillicuddy's clothes. The king was super chummy with Puss because of the Nintendo Switch. Um, indescribable gifts Puss had given him earlier. So the king gave McGillicuddy some fancy clothes and let him ride in the carriage with his beautiful daughter. She fell in love with McGillicuddy immediately because he was still mostly naked. Okay, she loved him because he was a great guy or whatever. But meanwhile, Puss raced ahead to a castle and tricked the mean shape-shifting ogre who lived there into turning into a mouse. And then Puss and Boots ate him! And do you know what that ogre's name was? Shrek! Okay, it wasn't Shrek. 
But wouldn't it be great if it had been? Would've kept the lid on Smash Mouth's career. <laughs> anyway, when the royal carriage pulled up, Puss told them the castle belonged to McGillicuddy. King was impressed, and his daughter was definitely impressed. McGillicuddy went along with it too, and they got married based on lies. But I guess that's how it was in those days. And as for Puss in Boots, he became president of the United States. He went on to eat so many hot dogs he exploded. Okay, fine. He lived happily ever after with McGillicuddy. To be continued. <laughs> Just kidding, the end. Welcome back to story time. I'm Pear. And I'm vibrating. <laughs> Dude, you are vibrating. What gives? I heard today's story was a real snooze fest, so I drank a lot of coffee to make sure I'd stay awake. <laughs> coffee, 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 coffee. Oh, yeah. Dude, I didn't say today's story would make you sleep. I said it's about sleep. Oh, I understand now. My eyes are wide open. <laughs> uh, well, today's story is an all-time classic, Sleeping Beauty. Oh, I know the story of Sleeping Booty. That story be poppin'. <laughs> it's not Sleeping Booty. It's Sleeping Beauty. See? Wait. Looks like it's called Sleeping Booty. No buts about it. <laughs> Orange, did you change the title of this book? No, but don't worry. I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of it someday. <laughs> oh. Now then. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a king and queen. They had three baby girls. Wait, what are you talking about? They only have one baby girl. Then why are there three in the picture? Hmm? Probably because you've had too much coffee and now you're seeing three of everything. Ah, good thinking, pears. There is only one of me. Hey, guys, guys, if all three of you talk at once, I can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> no! So the three princess sisters had three birthday parties and three evil witches showed up and put three purses on them. Orange, you're multiplying everything in the story by three. And that's why my version is three times better. Copy, 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 woohoo! Oh! Okay, so first curse went to princess number one. Before her 16th birthday, she was doomed to prick herself on a spinning wheel, causing the entire kingdom to fall into a deep sleep. Okay, that's true. That's in the story. Curse number two, the kingdom got renamed to Booty, 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 Rockin' Everywhere. <laughs> okay, stop! That is not in the story. Yeah, huh? See? That is your handwriting, dude. You even used an orange pen. Agreed. The culprit could be anyone, but sadly, we'll never ever figure out who did it, which is a total bummer. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the third curse was that everyone in the kingdom had to wear annoying orange merchandise at all times. But people actually thought that one was a pretty appealing. <laughs> oh, why, thank you. I will have more coffee, coffee, coffee. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the princesses grew up and were getting close to their 16th birthdays. The king and queen ordered all spinning wheels to be destroyed. Every single spinning wheel in the kingdom. And you remember the name of the kingdom, don't you, Pear? I'm not gonna say it. Booty, 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 rocking everywhere. Oh. <laughs> anyway, the first princess still managed to find a spinning wheel and pricked her booty on it. No, she didn't prick her booty. She pricked her finger. Well, that's not what it says in the book, see? Oh. <laughs> so then, across the entire kingdom, everyone's booty fell asleep and everyone's booty stayed fast asleep until a prince showed up and kissed everybody's booty. Orange! What? I didn't write the story. Actually, you did. Okay, so maybe I did. But you've got to admit, Sleeping Booty is a dreary fun version of the story. It puts the tail in fairy tale. <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, that does it for this episode, everyone. That's the end. <laughs> get it? The end? Yes! I get it! <laughs> Whee!